dear President Thierry, dear family, friends and colleagues. Thank you very much for being here today and sharing with me the rather unique experience of delivering an installation lecture. The title of my lecture is Customers as Part-Time Employees, Implications of Technology-Based Self-Service for Service Management. <coughs> I want to begin with giving you a brief overview, a very brief overview, on my service research journey that ultimately has brought me here today. My ambitions to pursue an academic career basically unfolded in the year 2001. At that time, I was writing my diploma thesis on a topic of electronic service quality at the University of Mannheim in Germany. While writing my thesis, I started to develop a deep interest in service management issues in general and technology-based self-service in particular. In 2005, one of the most promising and, uh, as time showed, the most prominent service scholars, Professor Parasuraman, personally expressed his best wishes for my research ambitions. During a uh, PhD seminar at the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands, I approached him with a printout of the title page of the most cited service research article to date, entitled SurfQual, and asked him for an autograph. He was somewhat irritated but by that request, but uh, as you can see the outcome here, he was willing to give me that autograph. Um, Professor Parasuraman is the lead author of the SurfQual article, which introduced a uh, seminal service quality model. The article has been cited over 16,000 times to date and has basically established a new field of research, namely service research. I strongly believe that this autograph has acted as my personal mojo with regards to academic issues at least. In 2006, I was able to finalize my PhD thesis on service quality in online retailing followed by a positive evaluation of my habilitation or postdoc thesis in 2011, also on behalf of the University of Mannheim in Germany. In uh, 2013, I was appointed Associate Professor of Marketing at Alto Business School. And uh, this year, I finally have the great opportunity to give my installa installation lecture here at this uh, prestigious institution. It feels really great being part of the Alta community and to share with you some thoughts on service management in the remaining, I guess, 15 or 16 minutes. Services typically resi result from interactions between service companies, company-related systems, processes, employees, and customers. When exploring service-related issues, research has traditionally emphasized the significant role of company-owned processes and frontline employees for achieving high levels of service quality. Nevertheless, customers also perform a decisive role during service delivery. More specifically, customers often co-produce a service outcome when, for instance, checking in at the airport, either in the classical way at the counter or in a more innovative way by using self-check-in devices, as we can see here on the slide. This means that customers are, in fact, with a varying degree, actively integrated in service provision as the so-called external factor. In other words, customers develop into a production factor, a development which is further catalyzed by technology diffusion into service delivery. For instance, a major consequence of technology's growing role is a commensurate growth in self-service technologies that call for customers to interact with technology-based systems rather than company personnel. In my own research, I have mostly aimed at exploring the ramifications of such technology-based self-service delivery for service companies. In order to explore this question in more detail, it seems beneficial to 
have a look at some service-related definitions in the next step. In their seminal article on the service-dominant logic, Wargo and Lush define service as the application of specialized competences, skills and knowledge through deeds, processes and performances for the benefit of another entity. The face validity check of this service definition has been provided by Finland's Prime Minister Alexander Stubb, who writes a monthly column in the Finnair flight magazine Blue Wings. In the April 2014 issue, Mr. Stubb identifies critical elements of service quality management. Interestingly, he intuitively highlights the importance of the previously depicted three components of a service when, when discussing the art of good service. In particular, he emphasizes the critical role of physical facilities and frontline staff competence, the actual behavior of frontline employees, and the feeling or impression people have after experiencing a service. In light of this, service theory and practice end up with a similar definition for service, allowing us to proceed. Now, bearing in mind these uh, three constitutive service dimensions, competences, processes, and outcomes, we are able to derive basic characteristics of service in a next step. This endeavor mirrors the dominating approach in literature for more precisely capturing the true nature or the essence of service. Competences and resources emphasize service characteristics in the pre-purchase stage. Companies mostly struggle at that stage to properly manage their service promise. In particular, customers experience an enhanced purchasing risk, given the fact that the service provider's resources and capabilities to actually deliver a service as promised cannot be fully judged by customers beforehand. In order to diminish the resulting perceived purchasing risks, risk, companies should offer surrogate information in terms of, for instance, issuing guarantees, warranties, advertising, or by building superior brand image. Next, customers are integrated as external factors into the actual service production. From the provider perspective, the main challenge here is to accurately manage the service encounter. More specifically, customers participate during the service provision or the service process. According to the you know, act to principle, service production and consumption occur simultaneously. Some researchers use the made-up word prosumption to capture this phenomenon. Resulting from the inseparability of production and consumption, services tend to be heterogeneous because an exact reproduction of service seems difficult in light of varying customers' needs, wants, capabilities, and uncontrollable external factors influencing the encounter and, finally, the service outcome. Next, the result of service delivery cannot be observed, touched, smelled, or felt in the same way customers experience a tangible good or product. This aspect is referred to as the intangibility of the service outcome, a fact that determines the final basic characteristic of service, namely the perishability of service, as the outcome cannot be stored like tangible products, for instance. So to sum up, the essence of service encompasses five basic characteristics. Perceived purchasing risk, inseparability of production and consumption, heterogeneity during the service encounter, intangibility of the outcome, and perishability of the outcome. Now, coming back to the depicted te technology diffusion into service delivery, the question is whether or to what extent technology actually impacts the conceptual core of service. For answering this question, a deeper understanding of the concepts self-service and self-service technology is required. In keeping with the initial uh, definition of services, self-service can be defined as the application of specialized competences, skills and knowledge, through deeds, processes and performances 
for the benefit of the entity itself. In other words, the customer, him or herself, is now responsible for successfully accomplishing service delivery. Such self-service is in most cases performed by applying technological interfaces as websites, mobile apps, or interactive kiosks. These technological devices are referred to as self-service technologies that enable customers to produce a service outcome independent of direct service employee involvement. Taking the airline industry as an example, Finnair has introduced the option of self-service check-in already years ago at Helsinki Airport. This self-service, for example, is already used by over 80% of Finnair's customers. Now, does this trend towards technology-based self-service alter our basic understanding of service? My answer is twofold, yes and no. In my view, the basic service characteristics remain the same. While the service features inseparability, intangibility, perishability seem unaffected by technology usage, purchase risk and heterogeneity might change their reference object. In particular, concerning risk, customers now have to evaluate their own capabilities and abilities to successfully use technology. Likewise, given varying customer skills of handling technology, the heterogeneity of service encounters might be increasingly affected by customer know-how too. As a result, however, it seems that the true nature or essence of service in terms of the five basic characteristics, remains valid, despite the fact that the context in terms of a technology-dominated environment changes. In my view, this uh, contextual change yields important implications for service management. As we can see, and I'm particularly proud of that slide. <laughs> it took me years to create it. <laughs> Customer ability to correctly apply technology gains significant importance, while it seems irrelevant, irrelevant for traditional service provision. While the appearance and competence of frontline staff served as a major quality indicator in classic service provision, the design of the Technolog technological interface, like for instance a website, now fulfills that role. Moreover, man-to-man -man interaction during traditional service processes is increasingly substituted by man-machine interactions. In other words, the classic service paradigm, high-touch, low-tech, is twisted to high-tech, low-touch. Consequently, customers develop into an increasingly significant production factor. Literature even treats customers as part-time employees of the service provider. No doubt, the new role as part-time employee assigns customers significantly more control over the service encounter. Finally, the moment of truth regarding a service outcome has been traditionally located in the interaction between frontline staff and customers. In contrast, to traditional service provision, the decisive aspect for the outcome of technology-enabled service is now customers' performance when using websites, mobile apps, or interactive kiosks. To sum up, what are the managerial implications of the depicted differences between traditional and technology-based service delivery? With regard to managing the service promise, my personal suggestion to companies is to offer customers so-called parallel routes to market. In other words, companies should establish a multi-channel environment. In doing so, firms enable customers to select their preferred way of being served. Naturally, customers should choose the type of service delivery that best fits with their specific needs, and even more importantly, with their personal competences and skills. Increased fit between customers and service mo mode in turn should minimize perceived purchase risk as customers should feel more comfortable when having the freedom of choice. 
instead of limiting customer set of alternatives by simply substituting one service mode, the traditional one, with another, more innovative, technology-based one, providers should rather understand the technological revolution as an opportunity to enhance customers' felt freedom of choice. While the idea of freedom might seem somewhat romantic, service firms should at least take the opportunity to create an illusion of freedom by presenting customers a limited set of service mode alternatives. Following information economics, such a menu of contracts allow customers to self-select, which is generally superior to company-initiated segmentation. A role model for an excellent promise management is Finair, offering customers diverse options for check-in, for example, online via self-check-in devices at the airport or in the classical way at the counter. Regarding the management of the service encounter, companies should invest in educating customers to develop into productive part-time employees. One way to accomplish this might be the provision of on-site support when launching innovative technology-based self-services. This would allow companies to smoothly get customers acquainted with new service scripts, effectively develop new service routines and skills, and most importantly, to directly communicate potential advantages of technology to customers. This aspect seems highly relevant as perceived usefulness has been found to act as a major driver of consumer technology adoption. What is more, aspects like a clear website or a clear design and content, intuitive navigation, allowing a convenient user experience, also significantly contribute to a successful launch of technology-enabled service. Lufthansa serves as a role model here. When introducing their self-check-in kiosks at Frankfurt Airport, the company assured comprehensive customer support by service person personnel during the launch phase. Once customers seemed to have developed competences to use the new service channel, such support has been reduced step by step. Looking at the outcome of technology-based self-service, service firms should be aware of the IKEA effect. The IKEA effect refers to consumers' tendency of attaching an increased valuation to self-made products when compared to similar products made by others, and honors the Swedish manufacturer whose products typically arrive with some own assembly required. Now, transferring the idea of the IKEA effect to customer usage of technology, it can be suggested that customer satisfaction can only be assured if the customer is actually able to successfully produce the expected service outcome. In the failure case, love might even turn into hate. When customers blame technology and consequently the service provider for not performing properly. Therefore, in light of highly heterogeneous customer skills to apply technology, service providers should prepare effective recovery measures. Overall, technology use should not lead to perceived inefficiencies in terms of poor outcomes, but to felt advantages when compared to traditional service modes, as for example, reduced queuing time at the airport. A practical example serving as a role model might be the German flight comparison portal Check24, offering free phone support to its customers. To sum up, here are my personal recommendations for successfully managing the technology-based self-service challenge. Offer parallel routes to market, educate customers in their role as part-time employees, and improve your finish. Thank you very much for your patience and your attention. <clears throat> Thank you.